Yeah, so we are back home from our four wheels drive road trip to Sweden and I decided to do this final part which will be more of an explanation on how it is to overland Sweden with a four wheels drive car, how it is to find a bivouac spot, uh, some of the costs and also how do they handle this pandemic situation. First of all we didn't explore all of the country, we only discovered a tiny bit of it, uh, of course mainly countryside and we didn't go into the big cities and also it was only a one week short road trip. But I do think that even not staying that long in Sweden we did feel the Swedish vibe and experience properly how it is to overland this country with a four-wheel drive car. As this was our second visit at this time of the year I think I can give you some nice info. Traveling during autumn time must surely be different than doing a summertime road trip or even a wintertime one. It wasn't crowded at all. And of course, I have absolutely no idea how it is to overland Sweden in summertime. We drove through a few regions, which were Halland, Bastergötland, Dalsland, Värmland, uh, Nerke, and we didn't go higher than Vestmanland because of the snow. We noticed that the more we went north, the more we had access to inhabited areas of forest and of course the more easier it was for us to find a spot for staying overnight. Finding a spot to stay overnight in Sweden is amazingly easy. Almost no forbidden signs. There were some more in the south, but for sure not as much as in Switzerland. Most of the forests are accessible by car and it's very easy to find a spot near a nice lake or in the middle of a forest in the middle of nowhere. We never saw anybody where we stopped for our overnight bivouacs, but uh, the places where we stopped, some of the places had already clearly been used for the same purpose because we found some already made uh, campfire pits. Driving through this country is easy and stressless, roads are in good conditions, the drivers are relaxed, almost no roadworks, which is heaven compared to Switzerland or Germany, and also there's no highway at all, so you can drive through the country with no added costs. I just want to add that we don't do extreme off-road, so I have no idea if this is allowed in Sweden. We like to move around and are more focused on visiting the country, enjoying the scenery and nature, uh, seeing wild animals as you noticed in the videos, enjoying uh, local food, going to local cafes and just spending quality family times outdoor. I think that we tend to have a good balance between uh, being overlanders who enjoy off-grid living and also experiencing local food and lifestyle. Having this type of balance allows us to meet locals, have a chat and sometimes go to places where we wouldn't have been without their advice. Every year for a while now, the fall school holidays are our special holidays without the children. If some of you also do that, please comment down below and let me know what you think about it. So we never feel overwhelmed or do we find it in any way difficult when we travel with the children. But when we are only the two of us, oh my, how easy it is. Okay, I just had to add this, so let's move on. Now, obviously we are in this very confusing period of time with this worldwide pandemic. I'm not there to express my point of view on that because this channel is not there for that. But I'm going to give you uh, some info on how is it in Sweden. We chose to go again to Sweden because it was one of the countries that wasn't on the red list of Switzerland and also we knew we would enjoy it as we all had already been there at the same season last year. In Sweden they don't have any lockdown nor is it mandatory to wear a mask in any shops or restaurants. Uh, People are just living as before, they just um, respect a certain distance when queuing up at the gas station for example and also all the shops and restaurants do provide the hydroalcoholic uh, solutions for disinfecting your hands and they do also have the floor stickers uh, for queuing up and that's all. Now you know how it is in Sweden, but I'm sure that most of you already know because they face this situation in a different way. Now how much does it cost? So 
You must understand that living in Switzerland, most of the countries worldwide seem to be affordable. But here's what I can give you uh, as info. As said before, no highway at all in Sweden, neither in Germany nor in Denmark. Uh, diesel was about the same price as in Switzerland. It was much cheaper in Germany only if you got off of the highway. One time we only paid uh, less than one euro per litre off of the highway in Germany, which was a really good price for us. Um, in Sweden, another point maybe not as useful for everybody, but toilets are free uh, on, in gas station or on the highway, which isn't the case in Switzerland nor in Germany. Um, two big costs are, were the ferry from Germany to Denmark and also the long bridge from Denmark to Sweden. So the ferry was 112 euros one-way ticket and the bridge was 55 euros one-way ticket so we had to double this price to come back home which was a total cost of 335 euros coffee is about two swiss francs per person and you can serve yourself several times but it's mostly filter coffee machine all-inclusive lunches is about 10 to 12 Swiss francs per person, which is really cheap compared to our country. Uh, what can I add as cost? So we did stay in this small little cozy wooden house and the off-season price was uh, 60 Swiss francs per night. And also a good point for this one is that if we were the four of us, we could have stayed in there for the same price. We never stop or try to find a campsite, so I have absolutely no idea how much this costs in Sweden. Uh, we took the fishing permits for two days and it was two Swiss francs per day. The food from the supermarket is less expensive than in Switzerland, but again, this depends on what you like to buy. Of course, food produced locally is cheaper than international food. I think that these costs can give you a good general idea. I can only add that Sweden is a beautiful country to visit and also enjoy as an overlander. If you are into hiking too, there are many trails and also national parks all over the country. I hope I didn't forget anything. If so, please add a comment down below. Before leaving you, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell. If you like this video, add a thumbs up and please share it with a friend. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye. Pas un truc psychédélique. Ouais, merci. Ah bon, arrête mon nom. Alors. Mais <rire> c'est plus haut que moi. Je peux pas m'accouder un truc qui fait mille fois ma taille. Bon, il fait pas aussi froid que là-bas quand il faisait froid. Mais... <rire> bon, ok.